Leo. I'm live on Facebook. All right, Prophet David Taylor here for your weekly live prophetic word. And always remember that you need the prophetic in your life. Okay? Through the prophetic, the Lord tells us things that are going to happen before they happen. He tells us about seasons, what season we're in, what season of life we're in, what season the country's in. He tells you when to move, when to stay, and whom, if anyone, to marry. So why would you not want that advantage? All that comes through the prophetic, okay? That's why you need the prophetic in your life. So that's why you need to be listening to uh, prophetic teaching daily if you can, weekly at a minimum, so you can stay in step with what the Lord is trying to say to you, all right? So I've got a word today, so we're going to say a word of prayer, and we're going to jump right in. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you just thanking you for this day, thanking you for your kindness, thanking you for your goodness, thanking you for all that you've done for us. Uh, Lord, uh, forgive us for any sin, wash us clean, fill me with the Holy Ghost, speak through me, breathe through me. Oh God, I surrender, I must decrease so you can increase. Let your word come forth the way you want it to come forth, that you might be glorified in all things, that sinners might be horrified, that saints might be edified, oh God, and that unbelievers would be challenged to turn from their way and turn from being the Lord of their own lives and turn to your way, because you truly are a good God all the time. Thank you for it, and I believe you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, amen and amen. All right, hold on one moment. Okay, that's right. I'm live now. Uh, I want to be sure my sister can you see me. So let me send her that link. Hold on a second. I want to be sure she gets that link. Need you to load a little faster. You know, whenever you're trying to load in a hurry, that's when it just seems like it just goes to <laughs> goes to molasses speed. Okay. I want to make sure she gets that link. All right. So oh, okay. My sister's here. Okay, great. I did not know my sister's already here. All right, great. All right, so let me say hi, sis. We're going to jump right in. Okay. <clears throat> Today's live prophetic word is be fruitful and multiply. Today's live prophetic word is be fruitful and multiply. Now, I know you think you know what that means, but we're going to let the Holy Ghost show us some new stuff. Okay. Because remember that signs and wonders and miracles always follow the prophetic word. Uh, and for those who believe it, but you've got to believe it and you've got to apply it to your life. OK, so today's prophetic word is be fruitful and multiply. So we're going to look at a couple scriptures. Let's look at our first scripture. Our first scripture is Genesis 1 and 28. <clears throat> God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air and every creature that crawls upon the earth. That's Genesis 1, 28. John 15, 8. This is to my Father's glory that ye bear much fruit, proving yourselves to be my disciples. That's John 15 and 8. Galatians 5, 22 and 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things, there is no law. Okay, two more. Numbers 33, 53, you are to take possession of the land and settle in it, for I have given you the land to possess. That's Numbers 33, 53. Hello there, Brooklyn native, 48. Good to see you on Periscope. And finally, Joshua 24, 13. So I gave you a land on which you did not toil and cities that you did not build. And now you live in them and eat from vineyards and olive trees that you did not plant. Okay. So again, today's prophetic word is be fruitful and multiply. 
So we're going to go through each one of those scriptures and we're going to hear what the Holy Ghost has to say on each one. When God first created mankind, when he first created Adam and Eve, he created verse 27, Genesis 1, 27 says, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air and over every creature that crawls upon the earth. Now, um, okay, I feel something coming in now. Okay, I'm gonna get to that in a second. Now, when uh, God says that he blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and multiply. Okay, the Holy Ghost is telling me to do it now. All right, hold on. Okay, this is for those of you that are watching me that don't believe. Some of you listen to me on the podcast. Some of you watching this video on YouTube. Some of you watching on Facebook and Periscope. You don't believe. You don't believe in a prophetic. Hold on. Uh, some of y'all have on yellow. I see a yellow dress and a yellow scarf around the neck and over the head. Some of y'all got curlers in your head. Um, I see some of you in front of a big, green, grassy place, like a, a large lawn. Some stuff almost as big as like the White House. Um, some of y'all, I see a blue car. I see a Volkswagen. I see a midsize or a smaller car, a Volkswagen, and it's navy blue. Um, I see it's bright and sunny where you are. Uh, some of y'all, I see a white dog with a brown, kind of like a brown fur around him. Um, some of y'all are sitting on your porch, rocking back, drinking some lemonade, watching me. And that porch is periwinkle. It's light uh, blue gray. It's periwinkle colored. Some of y'all are having, still having trouble with your mother. And it's weighing on you because you, you're having a lot of trouble with your mom. So it's weighing on you as you watch me now. And some of you, I see are very, very far away. I'm in Chicago in the United States. And some of you are watching me from very, very far away, but also prophetically, a lot of you feel disconnected from your life. You feel like life is way out there somewhere and it's not there where you live. Okay. Why the Holy Ghost tell me to say all that? Holy Ghost tell me to say all that to help you believe, to help you believe that the prophetic is true and the prophetic is real. Okay. And that God does see you and God does know you in the spirit. Okay. So uh, let's get back to our scriptures. So it says, God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it, rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air and over every creature that crawls upon the earth. Now, for the longest time, people have thought that only means have children. It does mean have children, be fruitful and multiply, but it's not limited to children. That verse might be referring to children, but it's also talking about becoming productive. It says, fill the earth and subdue it rule over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over every creature that, that crawls upon the earth. Now, why is that important? I'll tell you why that's important. That's important because God got to bring you out up here before he brings you out out here. The reason that some of you are not as productive as you could be is because you don't think productive thoughts. Okay. Uh, in my own life, I just got through staying up half the night, writing some more in my book. And I'm so excited. I'm so excited I can't make you understand how excited I am about this particular book I'm writing. It's a sequel to another one of my books, but I'm the kind of author, I'm the kind of person where I got to work with it until I get it right. So I found a pocket, I found a groove, I found a place where the story's coming together like I wanted to, and I stayed up half the night Right? You know why? Because I'm thinking productive thoughts. I'm thinking, what can I accomplish today? How much further can I get on my goals today? Because I have certain goals set that I want to get accomplished by the end of this year. So what can I do today to get myself there? But before God brings you out, out here, because everybody's always running around looking for cars and houses and stuff fall out of the sky. We're going to talk about houses in a minute. But before God brings you out, out here, he got to bring you out up here. If your life is still full of drama and trauma, <laughs> that's not funny. If your life is still full of drama and trauma, that is not the perfect will of God. If your life is full of trauma, we're going to deal with that one first. Trauma means you got hurt somewhere along the way, but you're still nursing that hurt. You're still nursing that pain. You're still not being yourself. 
because somewhere along the way, somebody told you that it was wrong to be you. And so, oh, that says 10, 8, 10, 8 that's wrong. It's actually 10, 18. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to put the right one up there. So somebody told you that it was wrong to be you. Somebody told you that you weren't good enough. Somebody told you you weren't black enough. A lot of black people are really good for that. They say they're going to take away your Negro card because you have not conformed to the book of blackness. Whatever that is, I don't know what that is. Who, who wrote the book of blackness? Where is it? We know where the Constitution is. We know what a Declaration of Independence is. When God wrote the Ten Commandments, he took his finger and wrote them down on tablets of stone and gave them to Moses. Who wrote the Book of Blackness? Where is it? I want to know. Because there are a lot of black people that will show enough get in your face and tell you you ain't black enough. I guess you ain't Negro enough for them. Okay? Uh, somewhere along the way, somebody got into that fearfully and wonderfully made head. Oh, my friend Lisa said white people too. Ha <laughs> ha! Some white folks told them that they ain't white enough. So somewhere, the scripture says that you are fearfully and wonderfully made, okay? That's Psalm 139. And that means that God knit you together in your mother's womb and he knit you together on purpose. You're exactly who you're supposed to be. But somewhere along the way, you got traumatized. It might have been uh, sexual abuse. It might have been mental and emotional abuse. It could have been bullying. But somebody made you feel bad about yourself. And you know what you did? You've been nursing that hurt. You've been carrying it. I stopped by to tell you, the Lord doesn't want you to carry that hurt one more day. The Lord wants you to get past it. The Lord wants you to forgive so that you can reset your mind because you're never going to be as productive as you could be out here until you get free in here. So you've got to get healed from your trauma, traumatic events that freeze you. You know, sometimes when you're a little kid, your mother, your father, your grandparents yell and they say, David, you that. Some people that happened to you when you was young and you're still right there and you're 40 years old and you still feel like you're six years old trying to sneak some cookies out the cookie jar and you're so afraid you when you live your life that live your life like that. You live your life holding your breath. Okay? You've been traumatized. You've been traumatized. The Lord wants to heal you from trauma. But then there's drama. You know what drama is? Unnecessary conflict. Making a mountain out of a molehill. Blowing stuff up out of proportion to mean way more than it does and wasting time on a bunch of stuff that doesn't mean anything. Because there are some people in this world that like to argue. There are some people in this world that like conflict. And I kid you not. They are actually not happy unless they have some kind of conflict going on in their lives. That's no joke. I, I'm not making that up. If there's peace in the house, they're going to keep fussing. They're going to keep pushing. They're going to keep poking and provoking until you're arguing. Okay? You don't need trauma and you don't need drama in your life. That is not the will of God for you. So when it says be fruitful and multiply, rule, it says fill the earth and subdue it. But then for some reason, and I know the reason why, the reason why is because of the haters. Okay? you got two kind of haters. One kind of haters is the huffy stuffies. That's self-righteous religious people. They hate the Holy Ghost and they love control. But the second kind of haters is the colonizers. You've got colonizers. Colonizers are slave owners that told you that the definition of a Christian is how much abuse can you take and still keep smiling. So we're going to castrate your men. We're going to rape your women. We're going to sell your children as property. We're going to take all your possessions. But you just be a good Christian and God going to bless you when you get to heaven. That's colonizers. Slave owners told you that. That's not the Bible. <laughs> that's not the Bible. Slave owners told you that. They're haters. So that's why it says be fruitful and multiply. And people run off and say, well, that means you're supposed to have lots of children, which is true. Fill those and subdue it. But then it says rule. Ah, rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the fowl of the air and every creature that crawls upon the earth. So God does not just want you to be fruitful. God does not just want you to multiply. God wants you to rule. Did you miss that part? Okay. The word rule coming out of the Hebrew says to tread down, subjugate, to crumble off. Uh, so that means if there's something out of line, you're supposed to put your foot on it. You're supposed to tread on it, not have anything tread on you because we're humans. He gave dominion over the earth round to us. So don't be listening to your haters, the colonizers, people that there were slave owners that taught you the scriptures that told you that they get to enjoy all the goods that the earth has to offer and God gonna reward you when you die, go to heaven. That's not in the Bible. 
as colonizers, as haters, okay? Slave owners taught you that because the word says in the first chapter of Genesis, rule over the fish of sea and the birds of the air. And why is that important? Why am I belaboring that point? Because you've got to think that way. When you wake up every day, when you look around you, do you say all that is mine? Because it is, according to the creator. When you wake up wherever you live, when you wake up tomorrow, go outside and walk around, look around and say, all that is mine. Watch what it does to your mindset. Watch what it does to the way you think when you wake up and look around, you say, all that is mine. It's going to change everything. The confession and the mindset going to change everything because it is yours. See that? But God got to bring you out up here before he brings you out, out here. Okay? Let's move on to the next scripture, John 15, 8. I'm going to read a couple of different translations. New King James, which says, this, by this my father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, so you will be my disciples. King James says, herein is my father glorified, that you bear much fruit, so shall you be my disciples. That's my favorite translation. Um, Berean Study Bible. This is to my father's glory, that you bear much fruit, proving yourselves to be my disciples. In the English Standard Version. By this, my father is glorified that you bear much fruit and so prove to be my disciples. Now, how many different ways does God have to say that in all the translations before you get the idea that he wants you to be fruitful? He says in no uncertain, in no uncertain terms, this is to my father's glory that ye be broke. Nope. This is to my father's glory that you be depressed. Nope. This is to my father's glory that you be defeated. Nope. This is to my father's glory that you be sick. Nope. Ain't none of that in there. You know who told you that? The huffy stuffies. The self-righteous religious people talking about, well, if it's the Lord's will to hear me, well, you know, child, sometimes you got to go through. That ain't what Jesus said. That's what self-righteous religious people said who don't actually read the scripture. Them's the huffy stuffies. Jesus said, this is to my father's glory, that you bear much fruit. Okay, you can't bear fruit when you're sick. Can't bear fruit when you're broke. Show can't bear fruit when you're depressed. Okay, can you see that? Can you see that that is not a part of the Lord's vocabulary and that's not supposed to be part of our lives? And it won't be a part of your life when you're healthy. When you have a healthy relationship with God, when you have a healthy relationship with your own soul. But if you're still back, listen to the huffy stuffies of the colonizers, telling you that you can't do that. You can't do that because of age, or you can't do that because of skin color, ethnicity, or you can't do that because of education level, or you can't do whatever, people like that. That's not what the word says, and that is not how you have to set your mind. The Lord said, this is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, proving yourselves to be my disciples. Now, there you have it right there in the Bible. Never again listen to slave owners, to colonizers, or plantation people, people that want to be slaves, okay? Because the Lord says, it's your fruit bearing that proves you are a learner of Christ. That's what disciple means, discipline. It means to learn, a, a learner, a, a, a pupil, okay? So Jesus said, the way that you prove yourself that you are a learner of mine is that you bear much fruit, not just you bear fruit, you bear much fruit. The Lord said, your life is very productive. The Lord said, that's what proves that you're learning from me. See that? So if you're listening to anything else, this is literally out of Jesus' own mouth. John 15 and 8, the Lord said, this is to my Father's glory. So that means that if you're doing anything other than being as productive as possible, that is not glorifying God. And Jesus says that that much fruit being a productive life is what proves that you've been learning from Christ. You see that? So don't be listening to the colonizers and don't be listening to the plantation people. The plantation people will tell you that you have to be a slave all your life. No, you don't. No, you don't. Jesus came and Jesus died and Jesus took all that on Calvary's cross so you no longer have to be bound by it, all right? Now we're gonna move on to the next verse. Oh, this one. Oh, this verse, these verses. Galatians, that's in the New Testament. It's one of Paul's letters to the church at Galatia. That's why it's called Galatians. <clears throat> Galatians 5, verses 22 and 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, 
patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things, there is no law. Okay. Now, I could do a whole series. I could do a whole everything just on that verse alone. But what I want to point out while I'm here is that, once again, the huffy stuffies keep telling you that the only fruit God is talking about is that, the fruit of the Spirit. So we are supposed to be loving. We are supposed to have joy. We are supposed to have peace. We are supposed to have patience, kindness, goodness. You're supposed to be a good person. Um, faithfulness, you're supposed to show up and do your job and be faithful to your commitments. Gentleness and self-control. Against such things, there is no law. But the religious people stop right there and make you feel like that's the only fruit God is talking about. But if you go back to Genesis, what did God say? God said, rule over. God said, have dominion over the fish of the sea to fall over here and every creeping thing that creepeth on, creepeth on earth. So it's not just talking about the fruit of the Spirit. We are supposed to have the fruit of the Spirit, don't misunderstand me, but it's not just talking about that. And I'm going to show you why in the next scripture. The next scripture is Numbers 33 and 53. You are to take possession of the land and settle in it, for I have given you the land to possess. That's Numbers. That's in the Old Testament. That's the fourth book of Moses, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers. Chapter 33, verse 53, you are to take possession of the land and settle in it, for I've given you the land to possess. Do you understand what God just said? God said that real estate, land, a place to dwell is part of your inheritance. It is not just love, joy, and peace. It is that, but also real estate, okay? The redemption of Christ is not complete in your life without financial deliverance. One more time, the redemption of Christ, the redemptive work of Christ is not complete in your life without financial redemption, without financial redemption. So in other words, you're supposed to get to the point where you can be debt free. You're supposed to get to the point where you owe no man anything but to love one another. You're supposed to get to the point where you have enough money to build all the things you're trying to build because you're supposed to possess land, actual land, actual real estate. You're supposed to be building your dream and you need money to do that. Okay. And the only people that told you not to do that are the huffy stuffies and the colonizers and the plantation people. Those are the people that told you that that's not a part of your inheritance as a Christian. Because I want you to notice something about American Christians. American Christians are quick to talk about forgiveness. Like forgiveness is the only part of God's redemption that he gave us. That's not true. Jesus did die to give us forgiveness. I talked about forgiveness on my last No More Genies teaching. He did die to give us forgiveness. And I talked about that whole process. So check out that video if you didn't see it. It's No More Genies 28, forgiveness. But forgiveness is not all Jesus died to give us. Jesus died to give us our property back. That's in the Old Testament, that's something called the year of Jubilee. And the year of Jubilee under the uh, Hebrew uh, covenant with God was that you could only be in debt for 50 years. If you didn't pay off your debt in 50 years, then the debt tour was just going to have to eat the rest of that. And you got set free. So you want to slave the debt your whole life. And you get your house back. You get your property back. You get restored. See what I mean? And so we are under a better covenant with better promises. That means that financial redemption, actual real estate, actual property is a part of our inheritance as Christians and your, the redemptive work of Christ in your life is not complete without the financial component, okay? One more, Joshua 24, 13. So all the huffy stuffies, all the people that hate the Holy Ghost are really gonna hate this scripture. So pay attention to how people respond when I read this scripture because they'll tell you who they are by the way they respond to the word of God. Joshua in the Old Testament, chapter 24, verse, thing, verse 13, excuse me. Joshua chapter 24, verse 13. Uh, coming out of the King James, and I have given you a land for which you did not labor, and cities which you built not, and you dwell in them, of the vineyards and olive yards which you planted not, do ye eat. English Standard Version, I gave you a land which you had not labored, and cities that you had not built, and you dwell in them. You eat the fruit of vineyards and olive orchards that you did not plant. Uh, Berean Study Bible. Uh, Joshua 24, 13. So I gave you a land on which you did not toil and cities that you did not build 
and now you live in them and eat from vineyards and olive groves that you did not plant. What did the Bible just tell you? I'll tell you what God just told you. God just told you that he can give you stuff that you didn't labor for because we have to put some works behind our faith. And if we don't work, we don't eat. So in other words, God is not telling us to be uh, lazy. But what God is saying, is saying in there is that through his sheer grace, there's some bonus property. God said, I gave you land on which you did not toil, the cities that you did not build. Now you live in them and eat from vineyards and olive groves that you did not plant. In other words, there's some people out there laboring and toiling now under the devil system, because the Bible says that the wealth of the sinners is laid up for the just. <clears throat> And the Bible says in Ecclesiastes that God gives to the sinner labor and toil and travail that he may gather and heap up and give to him that is good before God. That's talking about us. So in other words, God says there's some bonus rounds. There's some bonus rounds. So it's not just the place that you say there's some bonus rounds. Uh, land on which you did not toil. Cities that you did not build. Vineyards and olive trees that you did not plant. God said, I give you that. How do we get it, Prophet Taylor? How do we get it? You get it the same way you get anything, HBO. You hear it, which is why I have to preach it, teaching a prophesy to you. You have to hear it because faith comes by hearing it. HBO, you hear it, you believe it, and you obey it. I like what Brother Jesse Duplantis said. Jesse Duplantis said, God never asked you to pay for it. God asked you to believe for it. When I heard that, that blew my whole mind. So in other words, God, many times when we hear about the promises of God, we go carnal and we start struggling our mind, figuring out how am I going to pay for this? God never asked you to pay for it. He said, but my God shall supply all you need according to your paycheck, according to your figuring. He said, no, according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. God never asked you to figure out how to pay for it. God asked you to believe for it. That's why Jesse Duplantis has three or four $25 million airplanes. That man has spent $100 million just on airplanes alone. Okay, well, if God did it for him, he'll do it for me. If God did it for Brother Duplantis, he'll do it for you. He has that because he believed he could have it. Same with Pastor Bill Winston. He has that airplane because he believed he could have it. Same with Kenny Copeland. They have that private airplane because they believe they could have it. You see that? Same is true for you. So that's what I'm talking about. What's your mindset? Because this verse tells me there's some bonus blessings that you don't have to work for, that God is just going to heap on you because he's a good God. Don't you want to just bless your children sometimes? Oh, yeah. When my kids are over here, they can have whatever they want. Right? If I cook, I love to cook for my kids. Eat to your bus. Take home some buckets full. I, it's just food. I'm more than happy <laughs> to feed you. Feed you till you're satisfied. You see that? Don't you just want to bless your kids sometimes? And sometimes they don't even have to ask you. Don't you just want to give them stuff? Well, if us being evil know how to do that for our children, how much more shall our Heavenly Father, who is good through and through and good all the time, do that for us? And that's why the Holy Ghost told me to say that today, because some of y'all, some of y'all got to come off the plantation. You, How do you know if you're still on the plantation? You think like a slave. Uh, number one, you used to having no rights, and you got a ton of rights in Christ. You used to being beat up. Okay, Jesus was beat up for you. You don't have to get beat up anymore. Or uh, you're used to starving because slaves starve, starving and eating scraps. You don't have to starve, and you don't have to eat scraps. Okay, uh, you know you're still on the place the plantation when you think like a slave. Okay, so God got to bring you out up here before He brings you out out here because you have to believe it. It's your faith that's going to make you whole. One more time. It's your faith that's going to make you whole. It's your faith that's going to make you whole. It's your faith that's going to make you whole. That's why the devil fights so hard to stop your faith. But the devil can hinder, but he can't stop. The devil does not have the power to stop us. So as he would have done it a long time ago. The devil's underneath our feet. And all we have to do is stay obedient to Jesus and stay in Christ. And the devil might try and hinder, but he can't stop you. OK, so that's why you have to be in the word every day so you can feed your faith and feed your mindset. So you understand that Father God is looking for opportunities to give you things. He's looking for opportunities to give you the bonus material. He's looking for opportunities to give you the overflow. And why is that? Because the more abundance you have, the more abundance you can produce 
and the more abundance you can sow and share. And it just becomes this big cycle of abundance. But it's not going to happen if you don't think that way. I'm going to say that one more time. It's not going to happen if you don't think that way. You know what's going to happen if you don't think that way? You're going to eat up everything you get because you're afraid ain't no more coming. You're not going to have any plans. You're not going to have any long term view. You're going to be too afraid to live your dream. That's the trauma. Because somebody talked you out of your dream when you was young. And now you're 30, 40, 50 years old and you still haven't realized that because somebody traumatized you when you were young. You can get healed from that. You can get over that. You can walk in the fullness of the life that Jesus died to give you. But you've got to come out up here. See that? If somebody gave you a million dollars right now, what would you do? If you think $30,000 and somebody gave you a million dollars, it would take less than three months for that million to come back down to 30000 because it doesn't matter how much money some you get, your money is going to come down to how you think. So that's why if you want to be a millionaire, you have to think millionaire thoughts first, because even if you got the money in your hand, if you think 30000 and you have millions, those millions are going to come down to 30000 It's going to come down to the way you think. Do you understand? you got to get out out here. And God is just waiting to give you those bonuses. When you say, Prophet Taylor, why don't I have the bonuses? I'll tell you why. Because you don't really believe it. You have to actually believe it. Now, how do you build your faith? You build your faith by, I mean, in principles I've told you before, HBO, hear, believe, and obey. But you build your faith by uh, listening to the word every day. But you have to say it. Mm -hmm. There's something I confessed when I confess it about two weeks ago and it came to pass in about four or five days and it was glorious. I mean, it was glorious. I mean, it was glorious. And that particular blessing is actually still rolling. So it wasn't just a one time thing. I said it. I said it and I believed it was going to happen. And it did happen and it's continuing to happen. It wasn't a one time thing. You see that? Just to let you know I'm practicing what I preach. But the answer to your question is how you build your faith. You have to hear it every day. You must confess it because the power of life and death is right here in the tongue. You have to say it and you have to say it and say it and say it and say it and say it until your being gets permeated with the word of God, until your thoughts are like God, until your, your vision is like God, until your speech is like God, until your heart is full of the word of God until your spirit is full of the Holy Spirit of God. You have to let God purge you of anything that's not like him and let him transition you into just what does say the Lord. And everything that's outside of what God says, we begin to sweep that away, burn that away, throw that away so that nothing's left but what God said. And when you do that, you will begin to manifest the fullness because you actually believe it. OK, the Bible does not say Abraham saw God and it was accounted to him for righteousness. The Bible does not say Abraham felt God. He's like, oh, oh, Lord, I got the Holy Ghost. Woo, woo. He didn't, the Bible does not say that Abraham felt God and it was accounted to him for righteousness. The Bible says that Abraham believed God. Abraham believed that at 100 years of age and his body was dead, he couldn't make love anymore that God could revive his body and he could actually father a child at 100. And Sarah believed at 90 years of age, she's way past menopause, that she could actually become pregnant again and give birth to a child. And that's how Isaac was born, from a 100-year-old man and a 90-year-old woman. And that's how your faith started from that older couple. Because they believed it. That's why Isaac showed up. And Abraham, actually, after Sarah died, Abraham got married again and had six more kids by a woman named Keturah. So Abraham had Ishmael by Hagar, he had Isaac by Sarah, and then he had a half a dozen more kids by Keturah because his body came back alive because he believed that it could. And then God asked him to offer up Isaac. And Abraham believed that if God said, and Isaac shall, shall my seed be called, then even if Isaac dies, God can pull him back up out that grave. Because if God said Isaac is the one, then I believe that Isaac is the one to the point of death. That is why God blessed Abraham so much, because Abraham believed God with all of his being. And that's the same point we have to get to so we can start manifesting the higher levels of blessing that God wants us to have, because it's not going to manifest unless you believe it. How can you say that, Prophet Taylor? Because the scripture says, according to your faith, so it is unto you. 
that's why I do a teaching on no more genies, because what you want to believe and what you've been taught by the Huffy Stuffies is that according to God's power, just listen to religious people. They always talk about what God going to do, what God going to do in the Lord and the Lord and the Lord. That's good. And that's right. If God made a promise, he will fulfill it. But they talk about what you got to do. And what you have to do is you have to really believe it. And you got to put some works behind your faith. If God tells you to start a business, you can't just sit down and not start the business. You got to go get the bank account. You got to get the federal ID number. You got to have your mission statement. You got to have your marketing plan. You got to do your part because Holy Ghost is not going to do all that for you. But if God <laughs> told you to start a business, if you really believe it, you'll do that. That's what it means, adding some works to your faith. And if you don't believe it, then 10 years from now, well, some of y'all, 10 years ago, God told you to start a business and you still haven't done it. You know why you haven't done it? Because you don't really believe it. And it's not going to manifest until you believe it. It's not a matter of his power. His power is on all the time. Did you know that God's power in the spirit works like God's power in the natural? What do I mean by that? Like gravity. What goes up must come down. Why is that? Because gravity is on all the time. Velocity, mass increases with speed. That's on all the time. Combustion, that the air can catch fire. Okay, that's on all the time. That's why you cook something on the stove. Okay, because there's oxygen there and the air catch fire. When? All the time. Well, just like you're used to God's natural law, gravity, velocity, combustion being on all the time, I stopped by to tell you, his spiritual law works exactly the same way. That's why the Lord could do miracles. That's why he could walk on water. That's why he could pull food, enough food to feed thousands of people out of seemingly thin air. That's why he could curse the fig tree. That's why he could raise Jairus' daughter from the dead, because he was tapping into the spiritual power in the spirit. So when we when we tap into gravity, we tap into the natural power in the natural that's on all the time. But when we tap into the spirit, you tap into that by faith, but it's actually on all the time. So the difference between Christians is not God. That's like saying gravity works for women, but it don't work for men. That's like saying velocity works for senior citizens, but it doesn't work for teenagers. That's not true. That natural power is on all the time. Well, it's the same way in the spirit. The difference between people is not God. The difference between people is what you believe. I'm going to say that one more time. I'm going to watch this video myself. If this ain't blessing nobody else, it's blessing me right now up in here. <clears throat> the difference between Christians is not God. The difference between Christians is what you believe. And if you believe in a small God, and you believe in no miracles, and you believe $30,000, your life is never going to be any bigger than that. That is not God. That's your faith. That's why you're there. But if you believe millions, you're going to keep pushing until you get to millions because you believe they're yours. Because if you really believe they're yours, you're going to go for it till you get them in your hand. If you believe you can have a baby, if you believe uh, there's someone out there for you to marry, if you believe you can build a business, if you believe you can build a ministry, whatever it is, it's going to manifest according to your faith. That's how you tap into the invisible power that's in the spirit. And that's why Jesus had all the miracles all the time, because he knew how to use God's spiritual laws and his spiritual power the same way he used the natural power, because he knew it was on all the time. So if you have money in the bank account, you want to tap, tap into the natural resource of money. We got checks, we got credit cards, we got debit cards, we got Online transfers, we've got wire transfers. You tap into something that's there. Isn't that right? If you know how much you can bench press and you know how many push-ups you can do, then you get on the floor and say, I'm going to do, you know, three sets of 15 and three sets of 20. You tap into the strength that's in your upper body because it's there. So you just do the push-ups because you know you can. But you have to tap into it. Isn't that right? Well, I stopped by to tell you it works the same way in the spirit. You're not going to do them push-ups until you get on the floor and do them push-ups. Then you tap into the muscles that you have. You're not going to get that money from this account to that account until you do some kind of transfer. You got to tap into it. Isn't that right? It doesn't mean it's not there, but you have to do something. Okay. Well, it works exactly the same way in the spirit. Oh, hey, my cousin's here. I didn't see uh, Dana here. What's up, Dana Dane? Uh, right. My friend Lisa said scarcity mindset. That's right. That's what I was talking about, scarcity mindset. So... You have to tap into it. Uh, I'm actually glad my cousin is here. My, my cousin Dana will tell you 
because I watched her do it. I watched my cousin speak her book into existence. She started speaking about a book she was going to make way before it came out. She started dropping stuff on Facebook. She started outlining stuff. She said, I have this idea. It's going to be this. It's going to be that. And then she took some time to put it together. And then she did a book release. I saw her do it. You know why that happened for my cousin Tana? It happened because she believed it. That's why. <laughs> That's why. It was back here in the spirit. God dropped her in the spirit, dropped it in her spirit. And she says, this book that I'm seeing in here needs to live out here. And I believe I can write it. I believe I can publish it. I believe it's going to bless people. I watched her do it. That's what I'm trying to tell you. According to your faith, because there are people, that's why I work with authors. Because I know that there are people sitting around. I know there might be some people looking at me right now that are self-defeating. They keep saying they can't do it. That's why you can't do it, because you keep saying you can't. You keep counting your problems. You keep counting your obstacles. You keep counting your opposition. There's never going to be a time where there aren't problems, obstacles, and opposition. If you're waiting for all that to go away, then you're going to hit your grave. Are you trying to say that Jesus didn't have problems, opposition, and obstacles? He did, and he overcame them. Seven times in Revelation 2 and 3, the Lord says that his blessings are for he or she, that's not just talking about males, that overcomes. He that overcomes. He that overcomes. He that overcomes. Do you understand? So according to your faith, so it is unto you. So that's why I'm trying to show you. I've done it. Okay? I'm not just sitting up here running my mouth. I've done it. I saw some stuff in my spirit. God dropped some stuff in my spirit. And I was like, wow. Like uh, my first short novel that I wrote was Wayward Pines. That novel went to number two in less than a month. Okay? And I'm talking about the first book I put on, put on Amazon went to number two. I have the screenshot. It went to number two in less than 30 days. My first novel, my Soldier Serpents and Sin novel, went to number one in three countries. Okay? Why did that happen? It happened because I believed it could. You see that? Uh, right. This is talking about you, you're counting your problems instead of counting your possibilities. Because you are never not going to have problems, obstacles, or challenges. You have to overcome them. And then, according to your faith, so it is unto you. That's why a whole lot of people keep saying they want to get married. Oh, oh, probably tell you, I didn't want a man. I didn't want a husband. I didn't want to be married, really. Then you have to do some things to put yourself in a position for a man to desire to make you his wife. And if you don't come to the table with things that a man is willing to invest in as a wife, that's why you don't have a husband. You don't really believe it. Because if you believed it, you would put some works behind your faith. I'm going to say it one more time. If you believed it, you would put some works behind your faith. That's anything. Okay? All right. So, to sum up, the Spirit of God wanted me to say today that he wants us to be fruitful and multiply. That's not just talking about kids, but that is including kids if you want to have a baby. If you feel like you're too old or if you've had any kind of problems or if you're dealing with infertility, if you're a believer, you can get healed and you can have a child. You can get healed and you can have a child. You can get healed and you can have a child. How, Prophet Taylor, you have to find scriptures on fertility. You have to find scriptures where the Lord gave someone a miracle baby. Go before God and God and tell God, God, you did this for them. I need you to do this for me. Because he's no respecter of person. If he could give older couples in the Bible children, why can't he give you a child or two? See that? But see, it's according to your faith. And so he wants us to be fruitful and multiply, and not just talking about children, but to have dominion over the earth realm. He wants us to uh, bear the fruit of the spirit, meaning we're supposed to be growing spiritually, love, joy, peace, but also financial redemption. He wants us to get out of debt. He wants us to own our own living space. And then there's some financial bonuses. God said, I'll give you some stuff that you didn't work for. I'll give you extra real estate. I'll give you extra vineyards, a vineyard. You know what that is? That's a winery. You know what that means? That means God is saying, for example, that could look like a business that's already up and running, something that's already in motion, that's already successful, and God give it to you. 
Oh, Prophet Taylor, would God really do stuff like that? As Joel Osteen. Joel Osteen's father built that church. And then one day, because Joel Osteen thought his brother was going to inherit it, but God said, no, not him, you. That's how Joel Osteen got that church. If you didn't know that, go look up his story. You see what I mean? He gave Brother Osteen uh, uh, a harvest with something that he didn't build. His father built that church, but he inherited it. God does stuff like that. He's got some blessings, some extra, some overflow. So that's why you got to get out your drama, get out your trauma, get away from the huffy stuffies, get away from the religious folks that hate the Holy Ghost and love control, get away from the colonizers, get away from the plantation people who are always talking like slaves. You're not going to pull them up. They going to pull you down. You got to cut them loose. Okay? Otherwise, they're going to be talking about, we're all talking about grits, dummy. <laughs> That's a roots reference. Don't worry about it. That's kind of old school. You don't be walking walk around talking about them grits. Them. Yeah, that's not what you want. Okay? You don't even walk around asking somebody to give you a bowl of grits. You can own the grits factory. Okay? All right. So, amen. All right, now I'm going to go in the spirit and ask the Holy Ghost if there's anything else he wants me to say. Here we go. Okay, Holy Ghost is saying, again, there's some of y'all that don't believe, so you're going to need a demonstration of the Spirit. Some of y'all are wearing white. I see white. I see that scarf again. Some of y'all got on some bright red lipstick. Some of y'all, I see a dog right here at your right hand. It's kind of a medium-sized dog. I see a yellow car. Some of y'all got a yellow car sitting in front of you. Some of y'all sitting right on your porch looking right out at the street. Um... I see some of y'all have an older mother in the house. I can't get away from that image. Your mother's older. She's in the house. Um, some of y'all, your husband isn't home right now, and you wonder about where he is and wish he was home right now. Some of y'all married to a super, super, super dark skinned husband. I can see that. Some of y'all, you got three kids under the age of six. You got a bunch of little kids running around in your house. Some of y'all, uh, your feet is on some green carpet. Dark pine green carpet that you're on your feet through right now. Some of y'all are actually taking notes as I'm talking. Some are pen and paper, some on a pad. That's right. Why does the Holy Ghost have me do stuff like that to help you believe? How could I possibly know all that? How could I possibly know all that? There's no way I can know. I'm a person just like you. That's the spirit of God. That's to help you believe in the prophetic. That's to help you understand that the prophetic is real and, and true. And that's the Holy. When you hear the prophetic word of God coming forth, that's the Holy Ghost talking to you. Okay? Because God didn't die for us. God died for you. And if you don't understand the difference, all you have is religion. Okay? All right. All right, so it's time for that prosperity. Uh, I'm hearing that too. It's time for that prosperity. Some of y'all have been struggling for a long time. God's saying it's time to move you out. Move you out. Okay, what keeps dropping in my spirit is somebody trying to get married. So what the Holy Ghost is saying is you need to believe. You need to believe for that person. You need to believe. You need to believe that God is the God of creating people. And he can put together the right person for you down to small details. God said you need to believe him. God is the God of atoms and molecules. Remember that God did not create Adam and Eve through a womb. God created him from the dust of the ground and God created Eve from substance from Adam. So God does not need a womb to create people, but he does come through the womb. But the point I'm trying to make is that you need to believe that you can have that person, that custom designed person that's supposed to fit specifically with you. You understand that? Okay. Financial breakthrough is coming to some of y'all and it's gonna come in ways you didn't expect. God is saying you've been sowing and sowing and sowing a long time. You've been putting a lot of effort towards one thing, but God says, I'm gonna come a whole nother way. God says, I'm gonna come a whole nother way and just break it open on you. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Okay. Okay, I think that's it. So, amen. Like I said, I'm encouraged by the prophetic word. 
Praise God for it. I love the Holy Ghost. Now, I don't want to be a huffy stuffy. I don't want to be self-righteous religious person always trying to quench the spirit and to despise prophesying because the Bible says opposite. The Bible says quench not the spirit, despise not prophesying. Only people that do that are the huffy stuffies. I don't want to be like them. Okay. All right. So that's it for this week. Now, I am here every Sunday, 2.30 p.m. Central Standard Time, and I'm here on the second Thursday of every month at 7 o'clock p.m. I do a series called No More Genies, where we get rid of the genie concept of God. We get rid of uh, the colonizers. Okay, so my No More Genies series is the colonizer crusher. It gets rid of all that slave mentality, all that plantation talk, all that stuff that you've been thinking all your life that is not biblical. And we're going to look at what thus saith the Lord and we're going to be free from all that. So that's the second Thursday night of every month I'm here. And then you can also find a video on YouTube. And this live prophetic word that you heard today, I do this every Sunday at 2.30 p.m. Central Standard Time right here on Facebook Live. And I'm also simultaneously broadcasting on Periscope. Now, if you want to sow into my ministry, I don't do what I do for money. But if you want to bless me financially, because everything you bless me with just helps me to turn out more stuff. Um, my cash app, let me put my cash app on the screen. You can hit me up on the cash app because whatever ministry you sow into, you get the mantle and the blessing and the overflow of that ministry. So what that means is that when you sow into a prophet's life, first of all, the goods of your house are going to increase. Every time you bless a prophet physically or financially, like if you cook a prophet some food, he gives a prophet a piece of money, then that's going to multiply back to your house. And the oil of your house is going to begin to flow. Number one. Number two, when you sow into a prophet's ministry, then <clears throat> your prophetic increases. You get more sensitive to the prophetic flow in the spirit. So if you want to bless me financially, uh, there's my cash app. And then also you can check out everything I have on my website. I'll open my website on the screen. That is www.prophetdavidtaylor.org. And all of my uh, content is there, my music, my books, all of these prophetic words, the podcast, everything that I do is actually on uh, that website. Okay. All right. Amen. Amen. God bless. That's it for, for this week. Thank you so much to those of you that watch me live, Periscope, Facebook. Thank you. To, uh, and God bless you to those of you that are listening to me on the podcast. And to those of you that are watching the YouTube video, remember the YouTube video. Oh, Lord, that was live. Uh, my stuff is done. YouTube video is a little bit different because the scripture is actually on the screen as I'm talking. So you always want to check out that YouTube video as well. OK, amen. God bless. I will see you uh, next Sunday, same time, 2.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. Um, I will see you on the second Thursday of November, 7 o'clock p.m. for No More Genies. And uh, I've got lots more content to come. All right. Amen. And God bless. And remember, it's time to be fruitful and multiply. Amen. Cutting me off.